so hi welcome to the good news podcast i'm shane i'm glory and we're here with jt Bassy. and we are <laughs> between you and me hey. and we're gonna ask them some questions today about their... you guys nailed it uh so we're gonna ask them some questions today about their upcoming album armageddon so congrats on that by the way how do you feel about the response to the announcement so far thank you very much it's been it's been really good for the most part like super villain was like testing the waters which was kind of funny for us because we knew people would hate it like <laughs> half of them were like oh this is good and half of them were like the fuck is this band <laughs> what happened to them that's fair but um oh, like, hilarious but yeah like each each song sounds kind of different they all sound kind of different from the the last record and uh the majority of people you know have responded pretty well which is nice to hear um it's been really fun seeing our fans actually telling us that it's like their favorite songs that they've heard from us which is really awesome. cool which is what you want when you're putting out a new music they want you want people to think it's your best stuff so because it's half half right there's half people going this is your best stuff and then people are like, oh we should just write dakota again <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> i was listening to the album earlier today and it, it rocks that Dang opening oh, yeah. oh, mm-hmm. that opener song so fucking good wait, wait, you the new record? Opening track. yeah, yeah. oh you're listening oh, the to new the one record. yes mm-hmm. wait i'm confused New album. Listen to we, it. We yes. got so yes. open yes. baby. So we got an advance. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah, go. So... Oh, yeah. Uh, so I do like the it... opening track. Sorry. Oh, no, you're okay. <laughs> you're all good. Uh, is there any meaning behind the album name or cover art? That's what um, up. <laughs> we, well, well, the last track of the record is Armageddon, and we, that was the first song we wrote for the album. because really? we So we released Famous, and uh, in the same week that we wrote famous we also wrote armageddon and then we released famous and then we'll go on off and then that kind of sp- sp- uh sparked like the writing of the second record so it was always there that was always going to be a song that was going to be on the record hmm. it was going to um, be out instead of famous we like kind of petitioned for it to be when was that 2019 yeah wow yeah, early may may 2019 well yeah so yeah it's been no, sitting so- in the bank for a while <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it's it's just like evolved over time like it, it's basically exactly what it is now, but like we'd gone through like so, a few different versions of it, changed mm-hmm. changed it up, but it always stayed the same, like thematically. Um, and then with the cover art, we'll, we're just thinking about the world we live in and like how cool it is, but also how fucked up it is. And we're trying to portray that in an image. Like, so the grenade and the butterfly is like something beautiful, but then the grenade like can destroy everything in a minute. So. On a very superficial level, it just looks pretty sleek, though, the artwork. Yeah, yeah it, does. it does. It does. Um, so since you guys started writing this in May of 2019, when, like, how long have you been sitting on this fully finished? Whoa. About a, 10 yeah, months fully now? Fully finished, yeah. Okay, all right. We finished recording. Well, actually, it wasn't fully, fully finished. Yeah, yeah. we finished Sorry. with him in, in December. Okay. And then two songs were unfinished on my end. I didn't write vocals for them. So yeah, the second producer who was working with us, Jack, um, lucky enough, he lives in Melbourne. So I just like flew down and finished the last two songs with him. But that was around like March or April, right, Bass? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we felt- finished the bulk of the record in December and then we sat on these two extra songs and we had listened to the rest of the album because Sam had started mixing it and we still had these two songs and, and we basically reworked the last song three days before we had to submit it for final mixing right yeah Something like that <laughs> down to the line basically we're like we, 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 we were no no no. it's um real world. real world yeah yeah. Last one. <laughs> yeah but like we we were sitting in jack's house and then like i just had this new idea and we changed the whole introduction of the song in like a day and then we sent it to the boys and everyone was like yeah this is cool and we're like thank god because we can't change it back <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right the only reason why i asked was because i i was curious if you guys have been sitting on this throughout the entire pandemic or not since you had started mm-hmm. in 2019 but it's right. we've been asked this question before because like it is it kind of sounds like a pandemic record now yeah. but most of the the themed songs were written well before it oh God. but yeah. we just didn't get a chance to record yeah you know. it took us ages to be able to record it we're supposed to record at the, whenever the pandemic started like in april of 2020 Mm. We were supposed to record in Canada and then we couldn't. We had to fly home. Then we had to figure out how to record it. And we ended up getting Sam to come to Australia. So it took us a year from when we were supposed to record it to figure out how we were actually going to record it. Oh, wow. So even if we had have <laughs> recorded it when we were supposed to in April last year, it still would have been ages between records. 
Mm-hmm. Now it's been even longer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's been almost it, it four kinda, years. God damn. But it definitely worked out in our favor, like not being able to record in April, even though at the time it didn't seem like it. But if we recorded it then, we wouldn't we wouldn't, wouldn't have, have had dead beat. Probably like three, three, three quarters of the record. Real world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. what else? Probably like, yeah. Three half. quarters of the record wouldn't have been written. Wow. So everything everything uh happened for a reason. Mm-hmm. Uh so can you tell us a little about your writing process for this album? This one was kind of juicy. You go for it, Bass. Tell them. Tell the yeah. people. Tell the like, world. So we started with Armageddon and then basically everyone just started writing at home when we were off tour between then and when we were supposed to go in for the record. <clears throat> so everyone was just like throwing ideas around. Like there'd be a new idea in the bank every week. So we ended up having, by the time we got to the record, we had about, I, I want to say 50 ideas of songs. <laughs> yeah. And then about... Mm-hmm. 12 of them were like close to being finished. Um, but yeah, we would just sit at home and write. I'd throw ideas around. Um, this was way more cohesive writing for this record than it was for the first record because mm. we didn't really know what we wanted to do in the first record. We were just writing songs that we could write as quick as possible to get a record out. <laughs> and they ended up being sick. I love the first record, but like mm-hmm. this one just felt more like an us record. Like all the mm-hmm. things, all the sounds that we wanted to achieve, that's what we went for because we were like, this could be our last one, so let's just do something cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Totally. Why? Why do you say that? Yeah. Why would you say that? Bassie's like forty-five. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have two massive concave holes in my face behind these sunglasses. You can't, that's why I wear sunglasses all the time. No, um, I mean, like, because, you just uh, never know. Like, you never know. Like, we we didn't plan for it to be almost four years between our next records. Like, you know, you, people can change. You know what they want to do. That's you know. We we can't. It's funny. Predict what's going to happen. So, so you're not like yeah. calling you a break up. What's going to happen? No, 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 no. Okay. I would do. I'll run this thing no, no. around. I don't give a shit. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's just funny because like in the writing of this album and from basically from after the first record, there was a lot of people that told us that people were getting bored of us. Hmm. So then we started like we didn't we didn't care about the pressure or whatever. But then also you think about it as like bands that put out a not so good second record, they kind of like fade away. So that was always in the back of our minds. It's like, we need to put out something good. And if this is going to be our last one, we may as well have fun with it. So we did oh. everything that we wanted yeah. to do. All right. Well, I think Turned you guys achieved fucking that. Sick, so we're going nowhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys aren't going to have the sophomore slump. Absolutely not. Yes. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, so I want you two to tell us your favorite lyric off this record and the meaning behind it. Oof. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. This is this one was a bit of an old one. Bassi wrote the music for this song years ago. It's uh better days. Um, back when I focused more on being crafty lyrically. These days I don't really care if it sounds good. I just I just run with it. I, I don't really think <laughs> too much into them these days. Yeah, but yeah, that's fair. Um, I spent too long staring at that bottle gold. I need a genie here, man. Where did all my wishes go? I love that that one because i don't know why i just was thinking of aladdin when i when i wrote those lyrics but yeah i just never thought I'd, I'd talk about you know rubbing a bottle trying to jerk off a genie but here we are <laughs> all right <laughs> okay it's a fanfic Sorry, about, I, it's I, a fan I about aladdin I, I, <laughs> oh my god i didn't need that image in my head <laughs> didn't expect this to go uh. It's, um, I, I can't even re- remember like all the lyrics off the top of my head anyway, but that's a, the one that comes to mind. That's fair. Yeah. My um, favorite one, I have two. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I found I another one, sorry. Lyrics. I don't know the lyrics, but what, are the, what is the lyrics to the chorus in Real World of JT? Because I, I really love that um, chorus. Spent all my money by Sunday, but I'm living too fine for the real, real world vibe. Maybe I should care about it one day. But it, then the next line is like, when I lose my goddamn mind, so yeah, get like fucked. Never gonna care about it. live. Yeah, exactly like that. And then the 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 line going into "Go to Hell" chorus, the "I'll see you in hell" line. I just love that line. The way it hits yeah. in the in the song is sick as well. So, I actually think I've found my favorite one. It's from Real World too. It's in the the soft uh, after the, the the bridge. I spent all my money by Sunday. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> The most, the most relatable lyric ever. Oh, God, that one hit, right? Yeah. 
Uh, so how did the track list for the album come about? Did you write the opener be the opener, closer be a closer? Uh, what was that process like? Okay, so Armageddon would all, always was going to be the closer. I think we're, we're running with the theme that the title track is going to be the closer and they're all just going to be epic and huge. Um, mm. So I've got to keep that in mind for LB3. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I wrote Pleased to Meet You. That was like the, the one of the music things that I wrote, like just at home thinking, oh, this could be a cool like start to a record or, or whatever. And um, I never really finished much of it. I didn't even have a chorus for it. And then we're looking for an opener for the record because we're like, it needs one. It's too many fucking slow songs on here. It needs like something a bit more upbeat. And then we kind of revisited this one. I'm not sure how. Maybe we'll just run and drive ideas. I think, the bottom I of think the you just started playing it in the, in the control room because the song wasn't finished. No. I don't I remember the like song being verse. finished. Yeah, <laughs> only had the first place to make you stretch a bit. And I, I think um, we we're just sitting in the control room, and you and Sam were just throwing ideas back and forth because we were like, we need an opener. Yeah, and I, it, the chord progression worked for the first record, so why not just chuck it on the second record? Yeah, you know why? <laughs> yeah. Like when I wrote it, it was more like of a grungy, like hockey dad sounding song. So when we put mm. it to like, you know, what, when it got the tones that it did for the final mix, it, it sounded very like the first record. So you know, people. People can't cry too much and say that we've done something completely yeah. left field. There's still a little bit if of you don't want to the first dance. Record. If you don't want to circle pit or crowd surf when you hear the opening track on this record, then oh, that's so you're sick. Not listening I love that song. to it properly. So, it's so fucking good. It's so fucking Thank good. You, man. <laughs> it was unexpected because yeah, like it was it was nowhere near being finished. Like it just had the first verse and then like it came together. And we're like, damn, we finally it like kind of rounded off the record, I think, when we when we completed, we had it. bookmarks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. To answer your question, yes, we definitely. <laughs> well, we didn't <laughs> write Armageddon was. thinking it was gonna. We didn't write Armageddon thinking it was gonna be the last track. But when we wrote it, we're like, this is the last track on the record. Okay. And okay. when he wrote, "Pleased to meet you," we're like, this is gonna be the first track on the record. Okay. Okay. Because they sense. sound like that. They just like a big, fast opening track and a massive epic ending track. I think so when, when we good think bookmarks of a record. Like a track listing, I'm I'm really bad at thinking of like a set list, so that's how I would want to play them live. Like, but then, you know, different you, you play different songs live in different order. But like, we we try to make it like a I'm sure as every fucking artist does, but like a a journey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I achieve that. Lame to say. <laughs> when we're, yeah, when we were talking about um the the actual track listing, we. Went through. I think we went through about ten different track listings before we Oof. landed on this one. It's as always well. so hard because they're just like there's such minuscule differences. Like and, it and every, just got everyone to hears the tracks. Like, but yeah, sorry. <laughs> kind of just got to point everyone where hears like, the tracks. Fuck cares. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone hears the tracks. <laughs> wow. Sorry. sorry. My bad. Talking stick. But yeah, everyone oh. hears the story differently in their head, especially in the band. So mm-hmm. like we we put put our vibe out there of what how we think the record should go, and then whoever sta- stands on their hill the longest wins. <laughs> Basically, much, yeah. Because like there's there's so much back and forth, and like it gets to a point where you're like, I don't care. Enough. I want the just album to be out. out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, no, I'm no, just no one, Genuinely, no one gives a shit how it flows. Just yeah. fucking put it out. <laughs> yeah, just want at the start and the end, and then the rest can just do whatever it wants. Yeah, exactly. Basically, That's how good. a band works is like someone will have an idea. And if they don't like stand on their hill the longest, they'll win because everyone else will just give up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Just oh give up. <laughs> so what song off this album took the longest to write and which one is your personal favorite? Longest to write. Longest oh my God. Mm-hmm. Probably would, like would, go to hell and real world. But go to hell was, yeah, go to hell. was written way long, longer ago. That I was get, completely rewritten. But, oh. Mm. It was like, it was more, I don't even know. The the weird quiet vocal in the in the bridge underneath like Michaela's singing was originally going to be like the pre-chorus. Hmm. It just like, it went through heaps of like different stages. And I think the time crunch of, you know, the record needing to be submitted kind of just went, okay. This is how it should be. This is how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> how, yeah, we just said, well, I give up. This is what we got. Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, that, um, w- favorite that would song, be the longest, I think. Mm-hmm. Right, Bass? Uh, go to Hell and Real World. Yeah. Because they're the last two that we 
recorded and you were still writing lyrics up until the last minute. So mm. I think I music know your, was done though. Words. Music was done for a while. Yeah. But I know your just, like, favorite lyrics. song, I think, Bass. It's real world, right? Yeah. I think I think one because it's the newest, but also when you put it on, you can't help but dance in the car or whatever when yeah. you're driving. It's just like a sick driving. I think that's how we all gauge our favorite songs is if we can listen to it driving. And like it yeah. puts you in a good mood. I like think real world in the morning on the weekend, driving to go get a coffee. That's what mm. I think of that song. It's just like a bop. Like, yeah. Real world band. <laughs> that like that song was such a a fluke for me to record. It was one of those days where I just like I just shit out everything was gold. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it was everything was going so well. Like mm. I, I went into that session with Jack with spent all my money by Sunday. Maybe I should care about it one day. Those are the only lyrics I had. And then while he was just, you know, fluffing in the control room, he made me a coffee and I wrote the lyrics for the rest of it as I went. But like, is that because we went out that weekend and spent all our money? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I was a pretty little. Um, but yeah, that was that was good. My favorite is Better Days. I all think. right. Because uh-huh. it's so different for us, I think. It sounds very like... It's kind of like uh, you could remix into like a fucking disco. Take well, it. It, it, <laughs> yeah, you? when we were talking about it in the um, we want to. We we're trying. We we're, we're thinking about remixes for the record. If we go, <gasps> do it. If we can yeah. do it. Um, but yeah, better days just remind like like Coldplay Avicii. That's what it reminds me of, and that's got kind of what we're trying to do on that track, but make it by him, obviously. Mm-hmm. That one took um, a while to write too, because like the chorus was completely different. And I was yeah, we had to rewrite the chorus. Humming this melody, na, 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 na. and I was like, "Sam, can I just try that?" He's like, "No." I'm like, just "Fucking let me try it." <laughs> <laughs> and then it worked. I'm like, "See, listen to me, yeah, idiot. Listen to me. Exactly. Love you, Sam." <laughs> um, <laughs> since you had said "Go to Hell," went through a complete rewrite. Was the vision always to have Michaela on the track, or did she come in later down the line? This is a funny story. Yeah, let's um, tell it. So we. A while ago, Bass, remember when we, I don't know, you, you went to Gibbo's, right? When you lived in Richmond. And yeah. we like, we tried to like, you know, write some demos and stuff. That's right. Yeah, I remember that. Long time ago. And my girlfriend and Michaela were over visiting and like they could hear what we were playing in the, like the demos we were playing in the lounge room and go to hell, which was called, we're all going to hell wake at up. the time. It was called oh, wake yeah, up. Wake up. Well, you guys called it Wake Up. I never was going to call it that. <laughs> yeah, you just said that is not the name of the song. Yeah. <laughs> Executive decision. And, and um, so she heard that, which was like a kind of almost completely different song. And she's like, that's my favorite song that you guys have. And um, she's like, I feel like I can Which is weird because like, that, demo sounds, that yeah. demo sounds like it sounded horrible compared Garbage. to the Bonner version. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she always, that was always her favorite. And then it came like, we had this idea of like trying to get a rapper, um, you know, to branch out. Because it has def- definitely has that vibe. It was more like all these um, new school pop punk dudes that like also do hip hop or whatever. It sounded more in that vein when mm-hmm. we wrote it. Um, but it ended up like, I'm glad that we didn't end up going with a rapper on it. Yeah. Like, and because like, I'm glad that Michaela got to feature on it as well because mm-hmm. it was her, her favorite one. But we we're always going to do something with Michaela, regardless of whether it was going to be this record or something else. Just kind of like mm. slotted together at the last second. And she really, especially the fact solid. that like you're like, you're really close with her made it a lot easier. She basically yeah. like when, the, when the recording of her part happened, do you remember we, we weren't, we nearly didn't get it recorded. It was the last day before handing it in. What? And she like, f- she drove over to a producer's house and forced him to record it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Just hit the fucking report- record woke button. Up, woke up in the morning and she said it through and I was like, sick. I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> oh my God. Sick. Down to the wire. Everything. Have- everything. Yeah. yeah. Every- everything Biam does is down to the fucking Pressure cooker. You make, you make diamonds in pressure, baby. That's what we do. <laughs> Probably gonna get a diamond record. That's it out <laughs> as you yeah. should. Hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> Shoot yeah. for diamond. Shoot for platinum. Come on. <laughs> oh, uh, so where was your headspace at while you guys were writing this album? Yeah, because we were um, writing it for years. It's shifted definitely. Like we weren't. I don't know. You go, Bass. <laughs> I, I, I'm just trying to think. Like 
going back, it was at the start, it was like, let's just write songs and then we'll get yeah. to vocals later. And then there was definitely songs that we sent through to Jake and they and they um, resonated with him and hit that were they were the songs that would get lyrics first. Even if there yeah. was there was different songs with cooler music, um, if there wasn't any lyrics, we basically just got rid of that song. No matter how cool he was, we weren't going to force it. Yeah, yeah, like because um, sometimes and then like, the, and- Armageddon you sent to me, and then I had vocals for the whole thing the next day. Same with oh Super Villain, which is the same with, with Fame. Like all the all the cool songs basically yeah. just happen. Like it's just random that it just happens. You like somehow tap into this universal music power. And it yeah. just comes out and you're like, well, I'm lucky that I wrote that song and no one else did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's always usually best not to force it, even though like real world was like written for so long. And I was like, but I then can't you're fucking trying to write anything it. to it. Yeah. But then we and were then like, it's like when, when you kind of give up on it. And it yeah. sounded like it's a completely like a ch- different song. And like, okay, I can look at it a different way instead of the same way I've been looking yeah. at it for eight months. Mm-hmm. But the headspace around writing was always like just write something fun, something that you love. Um, there wasn't really any real pressure because we had it was so far into the in the future that we we're actually going to record. So it was just like let's just get whatever ideas out, even if this shit, just get it done. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of demos that all, all of us wish made the record, mm-hmm. um, but they're they're like so left field from like everyone else's record ideas three. and what that re- record ended up happening. Yeah, so there's there's a bunch of songs in the bank that we didn't actually get to record and we could. We're thinking about doing a, a double album, but then we didn't have enough money. Oh. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Man, do that for the next one, though. That'd be sick. Yeah, yeah. No, I've, okay. I've got like half of record three written in my head already. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no one's heard it. It's just, JJ's just like, it's really good. It's up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's up here, man. It's really good. Um, I swear. Is good. there going to be four years between that album, too? or Nah. No yeah, way. Okay. We'll have to fucking get Hopefully cracked not. on it pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we have to get it done like a year before expected just to account for delays. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Another pandemic, maybe. I mean, we were something. talking about getting together to record it, but then we went back into lockdown. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we couldn't, we haven't actually seen each other since we finished doing the record. Oh, wow. Since we did the Super Villain video clip. That's the last time we all saw each other. Ah, uh, Super Villain. Yeah. Yeah. My God. yeah. Time flies because we all live. We live yeah. in different states. JT mm-hmm. lives in um, Sydney, and I live in Melbourne. So, and we can't. We're not allowed to travel. Well, we yeah. are now. As of today, we're we allowed can, to, yeah. but like we haven't been able to travel. That's why we're going to get munted next weekend, <laughs> mate. <laughs> That's it. I can't believe we're doing it next weekend. It's going to be so good. <laughs> I am actually in New South Wales right now. I'm at my girlfriend's house, so I could just come visit. But it's a, like a six-hour drive, so I can't be bothered. Ooh, not worth so. it. That's a long way. <laughs> yeah. It's- it's road trip. <laughs> so how do you guys recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time? Should they put it on in the car with friends? Should they blast Drugs. it at a party? Should they work out to it? What do you I reckon, guys recommend? I reckon <laughs> put put in some headphones and go for a walk. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and then also wear blindfold so you can just start dancing and not worry about, but don't walk in traffic. So maybe okay. don't wear a blindfold. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I would, <laughs> I would either say listen to it while driving. Mm-hmm. Cause that's how I listen to new music or mm. grab another by fan or friend who likes the music and just chill and get fucked up and listen to it in the lounge yeah. room. With Rip the bong and put on. the album on. <laughs> that's that's, a, that's a slogan. Put on, Rip Madison. a bong, put the album on. The album. <laughs> Rip the bong, put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it up. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this question should be super, super quick. Off the top of your head, I want you to describe this album for new listeners in three words. No more, no less. Both of you have to do it. It's fucking amazing. Okay. Perfect. Fucking amazing, dude. <laughs> fine. Yeah, fine. We'll, 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 that's fine. JT's better. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, so uh, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want this album to invoke in your listeners? Uh, uh, oh, that's a good one. Um, thank you. I want people to listen to it, which they kind of already have, like, the songs that come out and going, fuck, this band got so fucking good. <laughs> and i feel like people like the ogs that have been there for you know years have just gone fuck they're so much better um i don't know oh, i just yeah i just think the music people really look fresh. at it i, I yeah. want people to go Ooh. fuck yeah i like i like new music again mm-hmm. okay. yeah well, going off your thing people thinking it's good i want them two things to be like oh these guys can actually write good songs and meaningful songs like change or something like that <laughs> And then also think about because we we didn't think we'd ever write a song like change thematically, 
or mm-hmm. like Armageddon thematically because we we're like a pop punk band, but then we just did whatever we wanted to do. So just people to realize that we did whatever we wanted to do. So so can they. True. That's a bit more inspirational yeah. than mine. I think. Good job. Good job. <laughs> so when you get to forty five, you become a lot more wise. Yeah. Man. You redeemed yourself after the three words question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fucking so- awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what band or artist influence do you think you can hear the most on this album, if any? Uh, vocals. If you listen to the album Underneath by Hanson, my favorite band of all time, you'll definitely hear what I grew up listening to and singing like. All right. um, Let me find the album. With the first record, uh, I was, you know, I just so desperately wanted to be the story so far. Um, mm. I was just yelling, and for the second record, I was like, oh, "Why don't I just sing how I usually sing? I sound way better this way." And it just came together so much better. And mm. it's okay. night and day. The lyrical perform, <clears throat> like the well, the vocal performance from record one and two. Um, and just for my own ego, it's been lovely when people have commented, "Going, oh wow, you sound so good." <laughs> like, <Yeah>. Thank you. <laughs> I reckon um, there's two albums that I know it sounds a lot like. Um, one is Out of the Vein by Third Eye Blind. I listened oh, to that bro. record a lot after we did the record and I was like, holy shit, our record sounds so good. But <laughs> but yep. record three is going to sound more like that. Yeah. And um, <laughs> also Chili the beautiful Peppers. letdown by Switchfoot. We listened to that, yeah, okay. so, that album a lot when, when we were writing, the, when we got stuck in Toronto with COVID. Um, <laughs> We listen to that record a lot in that Airbnb. You know what and, um, I think that it sounds like our record, second record. This is a fucking huge comparison, so don't take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> Paramore self-titled. Ooh. Uh-huh. Like a bunch of different songs on there, but like different for the band at the time. Mm-hmm. But you mm. listen to them and you're like, fuck yeah, he's all rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, 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 the, all the songs on there or anything, but... <laughs> Yeah, all the songs again, different. like we think we thought when we finished the record that every single song we could have put out as a single, uh, because every single song sounded so different and every mm-hmm. like lived in its own light. And then, but together, they made the record so cool. So, like an album that every song sounds different, but it's all cohesive as well. Basically, kind of like what it was like when you're talking about the track listing before, that was way easier than picking the singles because mm-hmm. last record we only did two singles, and this time. <laughs> We're doing five. And, yeah, and the funny thing is, pick. all of our favorite songs weren't, weren't released as singles. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We chose to get like, I don't know how that even happened. I was like, my favorite song is Real World, Better Days was another favorite song. And then Goldfish, and it was another favorite song. And then we chose completely different to what our favorite songs were. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that you guys got stuck in Toronto with like during COVID and everything. Can you yeah, tell that yeah. story? I'm intrigued. Yeah, yeah. Um, fueled so by we on... every edible under the sun. <laughs> <laughs> we were on tour with, we were on tour at the time, um, in Atlanta, basically, oh boy. and we and we started driving to the next show, which was Columbus, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And on that drive, there was news that um, some shows started not happening, and then airports were getting closed, and we're like, ah, oh, we're in the states, we should be good. And then the next morning the next show had been canceled um we're watching like a press conference of the mayor at the time in columbus telling saying like the venue can only have like 50 people capacity Mm -hmm. and at that point in time we'll we'll the whole west coast had been canceled we're like there's only like six shows and we have to drive another eight hours to get to the next show if it even happens yeah so um we called our manager our 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 tour manager was like we better have a call with your manager to see what we're going to do but he's like i reckon we should just go to toronto so you guys can record the album because we were supposed to be recording the album two weeks after that tour was finished you want to get stuck in ohio of all places yeah yeah so we ended up driving over the border that that day we just beelined it straight for um the toronto the canada border and we thought we were going to get stopped and asked questions that on the Wherever and the guy just took our passports. He's like, yep, cool. Stamped them Literally, all. Just let us through. Like, <laughs> there was no one at the border crossing. I know it was nighttime, but like considering COVID just like started ramping up at that point in the US, like yeah. I'm surprised it wasn't like backed up and like they were being more thorough. Yeah. yeah. But we got to an so, Airbnb. Um, oh, sorry, you, yeah. you continue your story. Oh, we, we went over the border and then we we're like, 
All right, there's two weeks to the record, so let's get a place to stay. Um, and then we'll just roll straight into the record. And then in that two weeks, we're just staying in Toronto and riding and just ordering edibles to the house every night. Um, and then we went out to Very dinner. Very touristy. One of, the, one, of the, one of the last nights that like Toronto was open, we went out to dinner. Me and JT walked down the street and it was oh, dead. Ramen. The city was dead. Yeah. And we went Aww. to this ramen place um, and the door, like no one was in there. And we're like, is this even open? We push the door open. This girl like runs out. She's like, hi, can I help you? I'm like, are you guys open? She's like, yeah. Like, all right, <laughs> we had no one just wants to come in and eat because of COVID, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so we ended up staying in Toronto for like a week, yeah. and then up, up, about halfway through that week, um, our manager called us and was like, Australia is closing the borders, so you need to get home. We'll figure out the record later, just be safe and get home, like, change your flights. So and we ended up We're doing like, that. Fuck. Yeah, no, we came up. The only reason we ended up taking that initial tour, so we had a re- another reason to go to the States instead of just flying to do the album. We were like, do we'll do mm-hmm. a tour, go record the record, and then we'll come home. I think we we're supposed to come home and do another tour. Straight up, that short stack tour was supposed to happen yeah. then. Um, wow. And then none of that happened. We flew to America, did half a tour, got stuck in Toronto, didn't even get to record an album, came home, waited, <laughs> waited nine months to record the actual album that we were supposed to record nine months earlier. <laughs> Well, it's here now. It was, to yeah. be honest, though, like that. I don't think I'll ever forget that time in my life. That one week in the Airbnb felt like a zombie apocalypse. I was just like, "What the fuck is remember, happening?" Do you remember when we were cooking? Like, um, we went to cook like nachos or something, but we didn't have a tray. We just we pulled out the the wire rack from inside the oven and we covered it in foil and then we just cooked no. we just put our food on top of that and cooked nachos no. on the wire rack. No. <laughs> And then, and then we didn't also didn't have a wire rack, and we bought um, the what are those those coffee scrolls? What are they called? Um, uh, the Cinnabon uh, Cinnabons. Uh, bought a, a pack of Cinnabon coffee scrolls. <laughs> Sorry, I just I didn't even think of. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they that's what they call them at the bakery down here. Um, okay. Yeah, and in, we could, we didn't have like a, a tray to cook them on in the oven, so we just put it in a in a pot on the stove. <laughs> what? To <laughs> It, was it like an old induction cooking thing as well? It, was, it wasn't like there was no flame on it. And we're like, is this thing fucking on? You asked me to cook rice. So you're like, JT, you're in charge of rice. And I was, Put the whole I was bag out of, of rice my mind. The- <laughs> Put a whole bag of like a kilo of rice into a pot of water. Oh my God. How did you make so it? How did you survive? Like, I, I, was, I tip it in slowly and slowly because I was just out. I was just zoned out. And Bassie looks over eventually and goes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> You know what? It's probably for the best that your manager called you and said, you guys have to get home right now because you might be dead. You guys genuinely might be dead. Not from COVID, just from not being able to survive. It was the weirdest Airbnb as well. It was the weirdest Airbnb I've ever stayed in as well. Like It was like, I don't know if you guys know like Toronto houses, but they like ever since like their boom and the city got more dense, like they've, they basically live in like one house cut in two. But hmm. this was like one house cut in four, so we oh. had like the left the left side of the bottom level, which had three rooms in it, plus a bathroom, all in a line. So like to get to the front room, you had to go. In, so you through walk like in, two rooms. you're in the kitchen, and then you walk through one room, walk to the other room, and then you get into your bedroom. So you're like, if you're in the last bedroom, you have to walk through two other bedrooms just to go to the bathroom. Oh my god! <laughs> it was like the weird, and there was no there was no like crockery or anything. We like we had to figure out ways to cook. We weren't going to buy crockery. <laughs> <laughs> that's why like i think that that time was so so funny uh, i think i really appreciate that we got to do that it's because it was just so so weird and nothing like that will ever happen again yeah, <laughs> yeah. well that's what yeah. you hope Touch wood. Yeah. yeah and then we flew home together remember that everyone on the plane was wearing like full masks hazmat suits and me and jt are just in the airport it's like shorts and t-shirt laughing carrying on we're playing um, the penis game the yeah, but with COVID, yeah the penis game so like you just say penis and then the next person has to say it louder than you and then you have to just start you just eventually start screaming penis just oh. in the public space oh my god you've never heard of that you never, play, I've you never, never heard, heard of, heard of that no oh, so you just you basically two friends and you're in a public place and then you mm-hmm. just the first person goes penis and then the next person penis. Goes, penis and then you just get louder and louder and now whoever chickens out lose yeah it's chicken the game. It's a game yeah. of chicken but then we started playing it with covid remember we just started That's saying right. COVID. <laughs> covid oh, no <laughs> You guys get fucking arrested for that. Come on. Oh, yeah. man, what, a, what a bananas time. And then, we, 
then we got but remember on the I, I just remembered on the way to that tour remember i i um got us into the the lounge <laughs> I so see, like, out. pulled some shenanigans and, like, got us into the Hong Kong airport lounge because we had to stop over there. I don't know. How did you do that, Basky? Can you remind me? Um, how you did they, that? they changed our flight at the last minute and then we ended up having, like, a 10-hour layover instead of a two-hour layover. Oh, wow. And then, I basi- and then I basically lied to the... I go to the guy at the desk. I'm like, hey, um, because of this, can we get into the lounge for free? And the guy in Australia was like, just tell them that I said yes when you get there. And they'll look after it. And then we got there and the lady's like, no, that didn't, that hasn't happened. And then we basically waited half an hour and I just kept telling them that they might have, they we kicked up a bit of a stink. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever gone full Karen at someone. I was just like, well, I spoke to the person in Australia and they told me that I'm going to go into the lounge. <laughs> and then the guy, you the, lady, here. the lady was just like, the lady was just like, fuck it. Just take the passes. I don't actually give a just fuck. Go. <laughs> exactly. Oh, but so we, we went in and in we there. just drank espresso Heaven. martinis all day. <laughs> Oh, so it was worth it. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So God. it was like just free food, free food all day, free Wi-Fi. There was a massage. You could get massages. Oh we had to shower. We had a shower, like in this amazing shower, just before we got on the plane. We did a bit of yoga. Um, a little bit of yoga. Drunk yoga. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I'm laughing. Insane. Because see, that's what that's where we went wrong. The trip started so good because I was on the way there. <laughs> oh. It was so like we're like fuck this cannot get any better than this i did half a tour and no album (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i mean as as bad as it was it was a really fun time it was gross (laughs) all right all right so so that drive that drive from atlanta back to toronto i drove all night like eight hours straight just so we could get there and have a good day off. And then we ended up just doing laundry and driving to Toronto. Oh. <laughs> the best kind of day off. <laughs> oh my gosh. You poor uh, soul. Uh, so Sorry, we, just... we, left, we left to ramble. If no, you guys it's all good. That's oh, kind of no, what I wanted. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, so for this question, I want you guys to picture you're on tour, you're at a gas station, you're going in. What is your snack of choice? Bassie's getting Cheetos, 100%. The biggest... Biggest yeah, cheese balls. jar of Cheetos. Biggest cheese ball box you could find. Ooh. I, I um, ate the last... Was it that? It was that tour. I ate like a kilo of Cheetos. Oh, I bought yeah. like a massive thing. I'm in like one I mean, sitting? The, oh, in like two days. Someone oh. bought it for you. There's yeah, no someone bought it for me. And then I threw, it, I threw it up <laughs> the next day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, it was like nuclear orange vomit the next day. Oh, my Good God. Time. I don't know what I would be able to get because I'm vegan. <laughs> we were outside of like gym as well. Americans have. <laughs> Yeah, there's like, not a lot of vegan friendly food in American gas stations. You can get chips. That's you typically like yeah, vegan. Mix. That's typically what I go for. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Maybe just a coffee. Okay. And diarrhea. Yeah. And then I'll just get back in the RV. <laughs> Horrible <laughs> gas station coffee. Or probably go go in there and get a handle of vodka and a Canada, a Canada dry. Yeah. This is pretty amazing. Have. Like, because we're in the RV, we found out the law of an RV is like the back half isn't technically a, a vehicle. It's It's a. Um, abode it's a house so mm-hmm. when the cops come as long as you're not drinking in the front two seats you're allowed to drink on an rv oh so we just so drink we all day basically okay. yeah <laughs> especially that first tour but hey what was i gonna say i just completely lost my train of thought yeah, those sausages snack. like in um you know the really shiny plastic looking sausages that just spin oh, like the salami sticks? Their own, oh, their own yeah. oil like on the like oh under yeah the little heat yeah lamp. on the little heat lamp things i want to yeah. try one of them so yeah i want to try oh, a taquito no. as well you might not be able to no. continue the tour you might want to hospitalize or something yeah. oh like, yeah last day yeah. last day yeah. Ugh. Oof. Oh, gosh. yeah uh so if the yeah. band was a dish what dish would it be and why interesting all right then we're going to tofu pad thai Ooh. oh okay okay <laughs> it's a bit there for everyone yeah, yeah. Debra loves a pad thai. Mm-hmm. Um, well, if, if we'd break down the dish, the twins mm. would be chicken and rice. Yep, we got protein would, and carbs be, there. I would be ramen. Uh, Gibbo would be pad thai or a cheese pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, You've completely so, different so when, things. Funny story. Funny story about Gibbo. He like hates cheat like. Che- like the twins and Gibbo way more health conscious than what me and JT are, mm-hmm. even though I pretend to be. 
Um, so when when we're when we're eating, like they don't really eat cheese. But when Gibbo gets drunk, he'll just order a chicken and cheese pizza, and he won't remember that he ordered it. We'll <gasps> open the fridge the next morning, and we'll be like, "Who's chicken and cheese pizza?" And Gibbo's like, "It's not mine." And then he'll check his bank account, and we'll be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I've seen Gibbo drunk steal a pile of cheese out of Vassie's hand and just eat cheese. <laughs> Oh my god! We were, we were having nachos at Sneaky D's in Toronto, and he just reached right across the table and grabbed the biggest thing of cheese out of my hand and just ate it. Oh! <laughs> it was it was swear that, that never happened, but that did. Oh, oh my god! Bassy, what would you be? You'd be. You I'd be, be a anything, trash really. bag full of scraps. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's dirty plates. Oh. Uh, no, I'd be PB and J. I'd be a PB and J. Okay, That's what I yeah. eat. Ooh. Uh, yeah. okay. Classic. Every night on tour, like after, just before bed, I'll have a PB and J. Especially that first tour when you didn't have as much yeah. money. <laughs> That's all I hate. PB and J. PB and J's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. These are some funny questions. No, ba- bagels and avocado Thank for you. breakfast and PB and J for dinner. So that. I mean, yeah, that's that's good. That's good. One thing about American uh, bread is that it fucking sucks compared to <laughs> Aussie bread. <laughs> why yeah, would you wait? Like, a lot better. I don't know how much sugar you guys put in this shit. All of it tastes <laughs> sweet and stale. Actually, that's really funny. We were in Walmart one time and Gibbo was um, looking at all the bread and he went, he literally picked up every like packet of bread to look at mm-hmm. the ingredients on it and he only found one without sugar. Wow. I'm not yeah. shocked. Really well, I mean, <laughs> to make bread, you do have to put sugar in with the yeast and the water, but it's like, yeah. it shouldn't be like yeah. the but second ingredient. American yeah. bread tastes more like cake than bread. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's like you're just having a muffin or something. Yeah. It tastes like fairy bread, but without the sprinkles on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys know what fairy Good bread stuff. is? No idea. Yeah, I do. It's, it's just right. like bread with like butter and sprinkles, right? Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. It's like a, a kid's party treat. Well, you eat when you're five years old. I mean, I still eat it. I made something. <laughs> the other no shame in that. Well, you're 45, <laughs> so if you take the four off, like, you're still five years old. As long as there's a five in your age, you're all good. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, so where do you guys see the band in the next five years? I'm sorry. It's a boring question. We still have to ask it. Yeah. Uh, I'm headlining Madison Square Garden 17 nights in a row. Yep. There you go. There you go. Um... Five years. We'll Hopefully be halfway around. through writing album three. <laughs> oh god! Oh my god! And in ten years, we'll finally put it out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just like without sounding like you know lame or anything. I just want our band to get massive so we can play six shows and I can run around and drink beers on a massive stage. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. I just want to jump I just around. Want to be on tour twenty four seven. Just like mm-hmm. entertaining. So the more people that get to to watch us, you know, be idiots, the better. I like yeah. that. To get the, those people to the show somehow. But that's what we have the five years for, to figure it out. Yeah. Exactly. You have enough time. Uh, yeah, we got plenty of time. So for the last couple this of questions. Like... Sorry. Uh, I, just had a, I just had a random <laughs> thought, but it's so good. <laughs> no. Do you want to share Would you like that to share thought? the thought? Yeah. Oh, no, I was just, it was super like meta. I was just like, I just want to be fulfilled. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah that's, that's fair. valid uh so for the last couple questions section shift away from music and go straight to death row boom so if you're on death row what would your last meal be with a drink bassy you i'm eating me? bassy <laughs> oh <I'm scared. laughs> how, how are you gonna wash bassy down oh. i will wash him down with i know some what it is straw Do you? No, you gotta say yours i know what my okay. meal is gonna be oh, okay uh, yeah. the big s- strawberry big M. What is Ooh. that? It's just like strawberry milk, like uh, you know, chocolate milk. Yeah, it's like a oh. chocolate milk, okay. but there's a strawberry flavor. Oh, okay. um, I would go blue heaven milkshake. Mm. Um, and then for my dinner or my last meal, I would have my mum's potato bake, my dad's chicken wings on the barbecue, and a piece of corn. Ooh, I actually thought mm. of my my actual one, and it would just be garlic prawns. Mm. Lots and lots of garlic prawns until Is I, it, you know, I'd get, I get die. I get bottomless nachos, so I'd never die. <laughs> <laughs> still watching that down with strawberry milk, JT. Oh, I don't know about that. 
if and you I, haven't garlic I've never prawns. heard someone call it weird Big M. Habits, though. Like, yeah, Big no, M. No. Oh, so it's a brand down here. Like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. I thought okay. it was like a nickname for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I don't know. You guys are really so some weird shit down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big M for Big Milk. <laughs> Big That's Milk and Little Milk. what it is. Um... Oh, also, um, an ice cream for dessert. I have to have dessert. Okay. Okay. Right. What well, flavor ice cream? Ice cream? Mm -hmm. Just vanilla, uh, like a a chocolate coated vanilla paddle pop Choc thing. Choc oh. top? Mm -hmm. No, no, it's like hard chocolate coated Magnum, like a Magnum. Yeah. Yeah. Magnum. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Solid. Uh, so, if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? Hogwarts. House? What house are you? <laughs> I've taken the tests many times. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's hard to do the test because like they ask you questions like if you were backed in a corner and someone came <laughs> up to you, yeah, what would you do? And the arrogant person in me is like, oh, beat them up. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> that puts me in like Gryffindor when I'm really not brave. So I'd probably be just a pissy little Slytherin. Oh, be chilling with fair. Draco. Be a exactly. Man, no shame in that. <laughs> I'd be one of Draco's uh, fictional minions. World. Um, San Andreas GTA. Oh, <laughs> that's actually very good. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. So I have down the best and last question, and every single person we've spoken to have said that it is the most important question. Okay. What's your favorite color? Oh man! Fuck! <laughs> I just stumped. What the fuck is my favorite color? It used to be pink, but I don't know. I think black is my favorite color. That's a switch. It's not a color, it's a shade. I thank you. Black's my favorite color too. It's okay. <laughs> All right, I'll know. give you a real color. I'm gonna go yellow. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yellow is the best color. We're gonna I'm trying to think of like what design. I would base it on. Like you can't not smile when you see yellow. So exactly. Yeah. It's such it's such a happy color. Yeah. I'm thinking of like what what like yeah, like item of clothing I'd want to put on. Like what my favorite item like color would be. Yeah. And I think it's like White t shirt with blue at the and moment, yellow on it. Beige. <laughs> beige. Beige. No. Okay. It's like okay. a hearing aid color t shirt. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, as I said, that's all the questions you have today. Is there anything that you guys would like to plug? Uh, listen to our <clears throat> album. Perfect. Oh, gosh. Perfect. Um, me and Bassy have out, an only fan, a joint OnlyFans together, so if you guys want to follow that. <laughs> it's called Red Wine Good Time. <laughs> no, we have nothing to plug except, only fans for, <laughs> except for the second record. Um, we're going to be going on tour. Not that um, if you're listening in America or anywhere else, you're not going to be able to get it because it's Oz. Oh. Uh, just keep an eye out on our page for potential tours. We'll be in We'll be announcing some other cool stuff relatively soon. I and believe. any fans of the band, if you're seeing other bands that you want to take us on tour, go to their meet and greet and fucking pester them until they take us on tour. <laughs> All right, I'll go pester <laughs> yeah. Grayscale and Water Parks and I meet them mm -hmm. next week. Oh, yes, perfect. those are some tours perfect. we need. There you Thank go. you. There That'd you go. be nice. Um, That'd be nice. We'd see the Water Parks guys again. We toured with them here, but then they obviously didn't like us. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, are you, seriously? Austin, are you kidding? Remember me? <laughs> no, no, we did, we did, we toured with them in the main in Australia. It was mm -hmm. one of our first tours. Um, that's that's a good tour. Yeah, that's a good right. tour. It was a sick tour. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. very good. Well, they have a spot open on their US tour now, yeah. so the direct support yeah, dropped out. Really? So yeah, yeah. Damn, yeah. well, that's just gonna message our manager. Yeah, right let, let's literally the, do it. Let's get the booking agent That'd on that good. shit right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I still have a good bit to go. If it, hap if it happens, it's all it's all you guys that do it. Yeah. Oh. If we didn't come on this pod, we wouldn't have known. So exactly. There you go. There you go. That's right. why you come on you guys our podcast. Yeah. Of course. yeah, it's been super fun to do this podcast. Yeah. I was I was very tired before I started, and now I'm in a good mood. Wide awake <sighs> and burping away. That. All right. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for. Sorry for Sorry for all the foul language as well. It's just how we talk. You're so. good. Oh, yeah, I talk good. exactly Shane, like that too. Yeah, yeah. Shane's, oof, yeah. Uh, uh, well, thank you for now. This guy's been between you and me, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast. And remember, fucking awesome, dude. Three <laughs> words to describe <laughs> <the> <laughs>